And we are working to channel more investment uh, to early stage companies um, uh, across the board, specifically in the in the impact space. And so you'll hear more about one specific program of that today. Uh, but generally, generally speaking, we're very passionate about um, finding in more ways for individuals and also institutions to uh, to be supporting key solutions and impact um, via uh, entrepreneurship and, and early stage companies. Um, you, we work, uh, we're privileged to work all across Canada. Kristen mentioned we're based here in Vancouver, uh, but we, we, have a, we have members of our team based in Toronto, also San Francisco, uh, and our projects really uh, span, span the globe. Um, we've worked a lot in Southeast Asia, uh, we're working uh, a lot right now in Eastern Europe, and we've done um, work in, in Latin America as well. Uh, our team is, is varied. We're about uh, um, uh, 20 or so, but before I get there, here's some of the work we've done to date. We've supported over 50 communities um, with our work in the last uh, eight years since Spring Activator has been, has been around. Supported over 2,000 entrepreneurs, 115 ecosystem partners served. Uh, and through this program you're about to hear about, we've trained over 100 uh, impact investors. Uh, and for all the companies we've worked with along, along the way, uh, over 30 million in capital has been raised. Uh, you'll see their team is, is varied. Uh, with, I mentioned the three offices we're in. Um, many of us are entrepreneurs ourselves. Uh, and that's a sort of, I think, a key feature of Spring Activator is we speak entrepreneurs language because uh, we have been one <laughs> ourselves in many cases. Uh, so we're uh, very happy to be here today. And you'll see some of these faces today with you on on the call. Toby, I think over to you uh, to talk a little bit about uh, TELUS Pollinator Fund for Good. Fantastic. Thanks, Graham. Um, great to meet everybody and thank you so much for taking the time to joining us tonight. I'm Toby, a senior associate with the TELUS Pollinator Fund for Good. And I'm excited to tell you a bit more about what we're up to. You can switch to the next slide. Perfect. Um, so TELUS Pollinator Fund was born out of TELUS's leadership position in social capitalism and longstanding belief that to do well as a company, uh, we also must be doing good in the communities that we serve and the, that we work in and that we live in. And at $100 million, the Pollinator Fund provides catalytic capital to scale startups driving social innovation and is one of the largest corporate impact funds in Canada. The TELUS Pollinator Fund for Good is an extension of TELUS's longstanding commitment to leveraging the power of technology and to drive positive social and environmental outcomes for all Canadians. And yeah, so our, our objectives and what we're really looking to achieve here and what kind of funds, we're, what kind of companies we're seeking to work with. So as a fund overall, we aim to create impact at multiple levels, but fundamentally, it is critical that the investments that we make and the partners that we have in our startups um, have a mission for environmental and social purpose at the core of their business. And that must be the driving force of what their business operations ultimately are. That being said, um, there is a key uh, component of financial return as well. Um, we believe that to do well, it must be doing good and uh, to do in, in the business sense as well and that there should be meaningful, measurable uh, impact and benefit to the people in, that need it the most, as well as to our planet and our communities. And that also translates into us being an active investor and participating to mobilize not just capital, but also support our organizations with the additional components that the entire TELUS umbrella can help provide. Maybe we can move to the next slide. We do so across four main pillars and uh, this investment strategy builds on the TELUS funding in the same way that we have through our consistent um, approach in our community boards and other philanthropic grants that we've been making for many years as TELUS as a corporate. TELUS uh, Pollinator Fund will scale social innovation um, through a number of different pillars, which are to start off with uh, supporting responsible agriculture and food systems. So in this sense, we will seek out innovative solutions that empower ag the agricultural industry for technology and um, create sustainable outcomes across the entire value chain. 
The next pillar that we have is caring for our planet. In this uh, segment, we look at decarbonization opportunities, reducing emissions across um, various sectors, finding technologies that are able to improve the circular economy and businesses that reduce waste, as well as build climate resiliency with the ongoing increasing impacts of climate change that we face in our communities. Um, our last two pillars, uh, very much in line with the TELUS Health overall segment, is that we are committed to ensuring safety and quality in healthcare is available to all Canadians and driving forward digital solutions um, and uh, mental health and well being, as well as substance abuse challenges and uh, reducing harm in that sense. And finally, our investment mandate is to support. Uh, startups that are building solutions for equitable access to education and economic inclusion um, uh, for individuals to, to reach their full potential. <clears throat> the approach that we take in order to identify and work with startups um, is primarily targeting early stage uh, investments at C to Series A. Um, companies that have early traction in the market are looking to scale and we can help them commercialize and grow larger. Uh, and also amplify their impact. We want to work with founders that have uh, exceptional and diverse leadership teams. And we're proud that 40% of our startups are led by women and 50% are led by um, indigenous uh, people and uh, racialized people. We also expect that the majority of our investments are going to be uh, supporting Canadians in uh, as a primary form and to deliver better outcomes for Canadians at large. And our investment size typically ranges from 500,000 to $2 million uh, as a first step in. And finally, uh, just a quick snapshot of our portfolio to date. Over the, we're just a, over a year old and over the last year, we've made 11 investments uh, and injected almost $20 million uh, into mission-driven businesses that are changing our world for better. To learn more about our fund, what we do, and um, to receive updates, you can head to tell us dot com slash pollinator fund uh, and uh, get our updates there. Thanks so much. And now back to you. Thank you so much, Toby. And thank you to Graham as well. Um, we're really excited to be working with the TELUS pollinator fund on this program. Uh, and uh, what is this program that we're, we're talking about here? So Happy to walk you through our impact investor challenges. And specifically, we've, we've run about seven of these challenges in the past, but the one that we're speaking about today is our health impact investment challenge uh, is a national program and it's focused within health companies specifically. So the program itself runs from April to June. Uh, as I said, we have our company selected and we're looking for uh, investors to join our cohorts. Uh, really, at the end of the day, what the Impact Investment Challenge is, is uh, we have an 11-week program where we take a group of about 20 angel investors, we bring them together, and we pool their capital to commit around $100,000 pulled together towards an investment that invests into uh, one company in the end, one winning company. And so we have a cohort of about 20 investors, and we have a cohort of 20 entrepreneurs as well. Uh, and these companies are uh, pre-seed, seed stage, healthcare companies across different domains and sectors that are all raising capital. Uh, and so we bring together these 20 companies and these 20 investors, and they go through this process together. For the companies, it's about getting investment ready, learning how to interact with these investors, and getting the chance to raise capital. And for the uh, investors, it's about learning the process of becoming an angel investor, going through things such as due diligence, uh, impact investment and measurement, um, looking at different healthcare topics, such as healthcare trends, and working through this process with the entrepreneurs to, in some cases, make their first angel investment. And in other cases, for more experienced angels that come through our program, gain access to deal flow of really incredible companies and uh, really a network that we create together with these groups that collaborate over uh, 11 weeks. And while there is uh, one direct investor and one winner company at the end of the program, there's many winners throughout the process. So we have a public pitch night for our initial 20 companies. 
each of those companies get to uh, pitch in front of all of our investors uh, and great, get great access to our network and different investors throughout that program. After that, our top 20 gets selected down to a top 10 by an, our investor pool looking at different criteria. And that top 10 gets taken down into uh, five companies. And our investor group does deeper due diligence and looks further into these uh, top five companies. And at the end of the process, uh, picks one company that gets the winning investment. As I said, we've run about seven of these impact investor challenges in the past. Uh, they're either usually geographic specific or they're focused around the themes such as healthcare or climate. Uh, in the past, we've trained over 100 impact investors throughout these programs and featured 100 companies. Uh, we've had 28 finalists, and what this means is these are the finalists that go through the deep due diligence process and get a lot of face time with our investors uh, and really kind of get to that finalist stage of the program. Through this, we made over $500,000 in direct impact investments, which has catalyzed uh, over $11 million in impact investments total. And you can see here some of our previous uh, winners of the Impact Investor Challenges, um, some really great companies, including one health company, Heal Mary, uh, that we had speak at a previous one of these uh, summits around their experiences in the program. As I mentioned, going through this 11 week session, uh, it's two hour weekly sessions for the investors and the entrepreneurs to learn about different topics. And you can see or hear an example of some of the different topics that we go over. Uh, while we have more general topics about understanding investment, we'll also be looking specifically at healthcare. Uh, for example, as we know in the healthcare space, the difference between the mix of capital and the type of capital that you'd fundraise for a medical device company, to a pharma company, to a digital health company is very different. And your roadmap and path to market is also very different. And so we'll help investors to understand what stages and indicators of traction are really important to different types of healthcare companies and how to best assess and benchmark different types of healthcare companies because of the difference um, across these different domains and sectors. So an overview of the investment, as I said, uh, at the end of the program, there will be around $100,000 that gets invested into one winning company. This investment is made through a special purpose vehicle uh, that we create and fund. And so what we do is we pull all of this capital into one vehicle and it shows up as one line item on your uh, company's cap table. So it's incredibly friendly for our uh, entrepreneurs and future investors that would like to take a look at these companies. So who's the program for? Uh, so we have chosen our top companies already, uh, but in terms of our investor pool, our investor pool is starting to fill up and we do still have room for investors to join us. And how do you know if you'd be a good fit in terms of being an investor in our program? The great thing about these impact investor challenges is it's all about promoting inclusivity in angel investment and uh, making kind of reducing barriers for people to get into this space, learn about angel investing, make their first investment and learn about impact in healthcare as well. And so we have both accredited and non accredited angel investors that come through this program. Uh, and it's, it's really designed to help individuals uh, who are seeking to make a difference through the power of capital. And as I said, it's not exclusive to seasoned investors. So quite a few people come through our program who are doing their first ever angel investments. This can be a seasoned investor who's curious to learn more about health specifically or impact investing, or is maybe looking to gain access to deal flow and broaden their network of investors and different companies. This can be an experienced entrepreneur who's built up businesses before, exited companies, and uh, is looking to figure out what it's like on the investor side of the table. It could be a corporate or new career individual or somebody that works for a company that would really value for this type of experience. And uh, it could also be somebody that's a healthcare professional, a doctor, somebody in the medical profession is looking to stay up to date on innovation and uh, learn about other ways that they can deploy their, their capital. So these are some examples of the types of people that are the investors. And what's really exciting about this program is that we bring together such diverse investors and different types of companies. Uh, and it's, it's a really exciting community to be a part of. And those discussions get very vibrant. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's an opportunity here to participate in an investment. 
So in terms of next steps for this program, uh, early March is when the investor cohort will be finalized. So if you are interested in learning more about becoming an investor in the program or know people that might be interested, uh, feel free to reach out to the team. So myself, Kristen at spring.is or Graham, who we heard from as well, Graham at spring.is. Uh, on our website as well, we have an investor program package that has a lot more details about the program. Uh, and we're filling the investor cohort on a rolling basis. So feel free to get in touch at any point. Uh, and we'll be looking to fill the cohort by early March. The program itself kicks off on April 6th and runs until June 15th. Uh, and so 11 weeks there. That being said, I'm very uh, excited to announce for the very first time our top 20 companies who will be participating in the program. And these are the 20 companies who will be uh, pitching at our first pitch night on uh, April 20th. Uh, we have a great selection of companies here with over 80 incredible companies that applied. It was a very difficult task to pick the 20 companies that would be most interesting for our investor cohort to look at. This is definitely the most impressive group of applicants we've ever seen come through our impact investor challenges. So I know the investor group at the end of the day uh, will have a tough time picking from this group and, and looking into these different companies. When picking these companies, we looked at uh, different factors from team background, experience, team commitment, stage, traction, investability, their business model, market opportunities, uh, and of course their potential social impact as well. Um, so, of course, these are all just logos on a screen, so I'll give you a quick sample of what some of these companies do. Uh, first, we have TalkTech, and they're an award-winning digital health company based in Vancouver. They use cutting-edge uh, Internet of Things technology, cloud services, and proprietary machine learning technology to create smart care hardware and software products, solutions that enable healthcare providers and senior care providers to remotely access data for safe and evidence-based care. This company already has products in the market with revenue, and we were very impressed uh, by their experienced team and uh, founders and advisors. And then we have Mommy Monitor. It's a care access platform that connects healthcare institutions, providers, and uh, pregnant people to a diverse range of culturally safe maternal health services and supports. Another company we have in the middle here is uh, Voxel Bio Innovation. It's a biotech startup using 3D printing technology to solve complex challenges. So Voxel is de de developing a human-like cancer tissue model uh, for reliable preclinical testing. Their tissue models contain vasculature, um, mimicking the delivery of anti-cancer therapies like the human body. Uh, these technologies have the potential to accelerate the drug development process and reduce the number of animal models that are used for drug testing. Completely different from Voxel, we have GingerDesk, which is a virtual admin service that helps health practitioners grow and build their health practices one task at a time. In just over a year, GingerDesk has quickly expanded to employ 30 virtual assistants across Canada and provide support for over 200 health practitioners across North America as well. One of our medical device companies, Imaginable Solutions, create assistive devices to improve the quality of life for people living with disabilities. Imaginable's lead product is Guiding Hands, uh, and this is an assistive device that enables people living with limited hand mobility to write, paint, and draw using touchscreen devices. They're the recent winner of the James Dyson Award uh, and is patent pending, has been used by over 350 healthcare professionals and customers across North America and Singapore as well. And so I've just listed out a quick handful of these companies. Uh, we do have a blog post that's just launched that's been shared in the chat here that goes through a description of all of our 20 companies. We're very, very excited by, by the caliber of companies coming through this year. Uh, so if any of these companies are of interest to you as a potential investor, definitely get in touch. We're also very proud to share at both Spring and TELUS Pollinator, we really prioritize uh, making sure that we create an inclusive environment for companies and investors getting involved. And so we're really excited to announce that um, out of our founders in the top 20, 50% are uh, BIPOC and 40% are women founders. We also have national representation with companies coming from BC, Alberta, Ontario, and Quebec. And these companies range in different healthcare sectors, such as digital health, uh, technology, health financing, medical device, medical equipment, and diagnostic companies. These companies are raising anywhere from $250,000 to over $2 million each, with the vast majority of them raising close to $1 million or over. So again, very, very exciting companies that we have coming through, uh, and we're very proud about the uh, representation that we're seeing throughout these companies. Uh, and 
With that being said, I uh, definitely encourage you to check out the blog post to learn more about these 20 companies, as well as reach out to us if you're interested in the program. Now that we've gone through the program and learned a little bit more about all of the organizations involved, I'd love for us to jump into the topic that we're going to be talking about today, which is measuring uh, and evaluating impact, specifically in healthcare. So I'd love to invite Davina, uh, who is a program manager here at Spring, has quite a lot of expertise in the area to give us an overview of the topic. Great, thank you so much, Kristen. I mean, that was uh, very exciting to see all that and all these great companies that you've been working on um, together. So uh, congratulations on that. So, so I will share my screen. There, I hope everybody can see that. Is it okay? Uh, can you can you see my screen, Kristen? Can you just confirm? Yes, there's just I think there's a box just over the slides. Okay. On the top left. Yeah, it's my notes, so. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of useful, but um, uh, let me, is that better? There yeah, we. that's good now. Okay, great. Okay. Um, great. So uh, I, I thank you for, for making space for this topic of impact measurement. I think this is um, a topic that um, when you're working on, on impact investment or an entrepreneur uh, that is impact driven, the question of measurement is always a, a very important one. Um, and so we're, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the topic itself. I think we have um, uh, new investors in the room here and interested in investment. So the idea is to really uh, give you a, a global, a, just a broad understanding of what it means to measure impact. Um, and so um, just a quick um, introduction also on myself. So I worked um, before joining Spring. Um, a few months ago, I was working on an impact investing fund in Europe, uh, and so this topic of, of impact measurements was, of course, um, very central to the, the work I was doing. Um, the idea here is to uh, also give individual investors an, an understanding of impact measurements. I think um, you know you have you have funds working on on, on impact measurements, but it's also a topic that is. Uh, very relevant for individuals who are um, investing and how how to measure uh, their the impact that they're actually creating. So uh, first slide to say, you know, why do investors measure impact? So of course, you know, first answer is obviously because um, this is this is the activity of the business they're in, they're into impact and it's important to measure to actually really understand the, the amount of impact that you're having. So this is kind of the, the basic one, but I think um, impact measurement is also a very uh, useful operational tool. Um, so when, when you were in the business of in investing, you actually have to select companies, you then have to follow up with them, track them, and see their uh, their evolution, and then make decisions along the way uh, throughout the life of the investment. And so, actually, measuring the impact is very useful for that because it's understanding if you want to invest in a company, you have to see, you know, you have a lot of things to 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 uh, to, to analyze and to select from. Uh, and actually understanding if you can measure the impact that your that the company that you're investing is making, you know, will make a big difference also in the investment decision. Um, understanding the business model, of course, and and, and the financial and, and and all the uh, kind of the more business uh, activity of a business is important, but measuring its impact is is is, um, is crucial. Uh, and I I put here reinvestment decision, you know. So when I think it's important also when um uh to know when when you invest it's usually for for a long period of time um and uh and and so uh reinvestments uh, might be needed and and usually also understanding the impact that was created in, in the first few years of the, your investment will also be very useful to 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 continue and to continue making good investment decisions um so there's been a lot of work that's been done in the sector by, by different actors. I wanted to share the impact management project um, work uh, that has been done around impact measurement. Um, and I think this, um, these five dimensions of impacts are very useful to actually frame uh, the impact measurement 
uh, and, and uh, the impact analysis that you will do on a company uh, before investing. It's, it's also actually, if uh, probably there are a few entrepreneurs in the room, it's also a great way to um, also, when you're talking to investors, you know, how do you present the impact that, you, that you're making? Uh, it's not always easy and it's, it's, uh, it can be, um, yeah, I mean, it can be a bit complex to explain clearly the impact that, that you're making. And so I think the, these five dimensions are actually quite help to um, frame the, the topic of, of, uh, of the impact. Um, and so it's what, you know, uh, who, how much contribution risk. So I'm sorry, I'm just reading what's there. But um, and I wanted to take an example. Um, so when I was a, an investor in, 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 in France, we invested in a company that was uh, addressing the issue of, um, of poor quality of employment for carers. So people who, who take care of, of the elderly and the sick. Um, a, a huge, the what is like a huge issue, you know, and, and making sure that people who need uh, care get the best care possible. Um, that's, that's, a, that's, a very, uh, that's a very important uh, topic. Uh, but, but often these, these jobs are not well regarded and not well valued. Uh, so this company was focusing on, on giving better working conditions to, um, to carers by giving them full-time employment um, and, and getting, giving them the opportunity to organize themselves uh, and not have too much of a hierarchy there. So to have a co, co um, I'd say to, to, to co-manage themselves. Uh, and so the what that was addressed here is, you know, there is a very big need for good quality care, especially in our aging societies. Uh, but there is a, a, a big gap in the way that actually people who are doing uh, providing care are being treated. So this was their their what um, on the who you know so who who is experiences experiencing this this outcome. So it's the focus was both on you know people carers and 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 carers and their their employment condition, but also of course on all the beneficiaries and all the people that they're supporting. Uh, and so this kind of classifying, you know, also who, who are all the, the people benefit, benefiting from this project is, is important. And then there's how much. So of course, um, when you're talking about home care, you know, the, the level of impact here is, is very, is very in depth because, you know, you're, you're talking about people's lives and it's a kind of a very day-to-day uh, -day activity to take care of, of, of an elderly person. Um, and so you know, when, we're, when you're kind of selecting a project and trying to understand the impact that they have, it's quite important to understand the depth that they have. So there's no right or wrong level of depth. It's just on, you know, helping you understand how much actually the impact, um, how much Im impactful is a project. Oh, that's not there. That's sorry, how impactful the project is. Uh, and then the contribution, uh, you know, so this is also sometimes called addition additionality. Uh, and so um, this, of course, is, is to, to show how, how impact, you know, how, if, if this project was not there, you know, would, would, what, what kind of change would happen um, in, 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 in the sector. So um, the contribution is also very important to understand, uh, you know, for in the case uh, of the company I was, uh, was just describing, you know, they, they, so they provided a service to provide high quality care and high, high quality employment, but they also had a B2B activity which was to train other uh, caring company to adopt the same method that, that they had. And I, th I think it's quite interesting to see because in a way their, their business model, of course, um, you would say, okay, boom, and then they're training the competition to do the same thing that they're doing. But the way they would see it is, you know, the more impactful, you know, the more better quality care there is out there, you know, of course, the better. So um, you know, they 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 did they pushed a bit the, their the model to to. Of course, it was a business opportunity for them, but they was also kind of addressing this competition by saying, okay, it's not competition; it's just more impact. And then the, finally, the risk. Uh, so this is something that's quite new in the impact measurement space, uh, assessing the risk. I think seeing having been in that space, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's really something that's emerging in in, in, the, in the last few years. And saying, okay, you know, of course, uh, there is there are risk for the impact. Uh, you know, both that that you know, in in the end, um, a company would not really be able. In the case of Alanvi, so the company I was talking uh, about, uh, if if uh, if the level of support that they're actually providing to their their the carers 
is not really up there. You know, they need to be aware of that and to make sure they don't fall into the typical trap that other companies have fallen into. Um, but also the risk of having this business model. Of course, you know, if you provide full time jobs to uh, carers when others uh, are working with these people in, on a temporary basis, you know, it, it, of course, it's for a business reason also. And so they, they, they make the choice to employ um, carers full time. So it's, it is a cost for them. And the risk also is if, if the company fails, of course, all these carers will, will, will not will lose their jobs. So this is, this is an important risk. So this is just kind of, a, I think, a useful framework to, um, to both allow investors to really kind of make sure when they you know, enter into a company, they really kind of see the globality of the impact that is created and have a way to organize uh, their thoughts. Okay, so you know we can't really take, talk about impact measurements nowadays without talking about the sustainable development goals. So people who are maybe a bit newer to this world of impact uh, might not be familiar. I just wanted to briefly uh, put it out there so that you kind of have heard about, about it if it's the first time you hear about it, um, or kind of just uh, if everybody knows, then that's great. Uh, but I think um, the effort have uh, behind this exercise of setting these these goals, the sustainable develop, sustainable development goals, has been to really um, provide a, a, a framework uh, for uh, to 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 uh, to allow projects and investors to really see where uh, where they want to really push their impact and how to measure how how their contributions to these. Uh, development goals, um, and so here you know we're talking about health uh, with this uh, this uh, this uh, this challenge, and so you know SDG three uh, will be of course the the one of the main one. I guess uh, SDG six will also be a, a, an important one. But so if you're if you're working in this field and discovering this field, these are this is an important framework to to learn about. And maybe uh, Graham, if you want to share something in the chat about this, or maybe you have already. Um, I think that these are all very useful frameworks. Yep. Already done. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, and so also um, kind of to, to give you a, a brief overview. So in terms of how, how do you actually measure your, your contribution to sustainable development goals? Well, first you pick one and then you talk about it and, and you mention it and, and you use it to select uh, the portfolio. So here, you know, you've decided to, to be a, um, an investor in this challenge, uh, those of you maybe who have, uh, so you know, you've picked your, 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 your SDGs that are re relevant to this challenge. Um, but then how do you really take this forward? Uh, what are the next steps once you've decided what SDG is the, is the most meaningful for you? Um, and so this is where the theory of change can be a very useful also framework. So also there's a lot of jargon also in our in our world of impact, uh, and so SDG is one, and theory of change is another one. And so, um, you know, what's your theory of change? It's kind of very, the very popular question in in our, in, our, in our sectors. And so, just to give you also here an understanding of the, actually what that means, uh, theory of change is is a framework really for those who actually want to align their activities and their impact. So it's quite uh, useful here to, uh, you know, when, when we're talking about here about, about this topic, um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's, it can take, I mean, I we could spend two hours just on that slide, just going through it. Um, but the main point is, you know, um, what, what is the impact that you're wanting to have? What SDGs do you really want to push? Uh, and then how do you uh, put all your activities in, in coherence with that? And uh, what the theory of change allows you to do is to list the activities that you that you have. So either your activity as an investor, uh, it can also be your activities as, as an entrepreneur and as um, and and for investors to actually also uh, understand what what when, uh, to use as a selection tool when they decide to invest in a company. Um, but it's the idea is to uh, list all the activities measure the outputs that is realized by the, these activities and these outputs will allow you to list a set of outcomes okay, so it's, these are the outcomes that are generated by your activities and this will lead then you to be able to 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 list the, the impact that you're having so also a framework something like a live document 
um, that that is there to live and to uh, to to give you the, an opportunity to think and to take a sometimes take a step back and look at what you're doing as an investor as an entrepreneur and make sure that your activities your outputs your outcomes are really in line with the impact that you want to have and 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 the in the output the measurement part of course is is the outputs where you really uh, have a chance to kind of list the things that allow you to measure uh, your impact um there so so just as a last slide uh, and as we're talking about uh sorry interesting animation here yeah so um uh i think when we're talking about impact measurements you know of course uh, uh, through the through the, these the, the different slides here i was talking about sometimes the entrepreneurs sometimes on the investor side i think the main idea uh when you're entering an investment is really alignment um and so using these the different frameworks and the different um uh, tools that I just explained it's, uh, are really there also for you to share as investors and as entrepreneurs a common language around impact measurement. Um, so that when you know when you're in in the course of your investment, in the course of having your investors, you make sure that you're speaking the same language, you share the same values, and you are together aligned on on where you want to go and and when the company wants to to to, to grow and and how the What's the impact that you want to have in the world? Um, so I just want to kind of share this final slide. There's a lot of words here, but the, the main idea is to really um, make sure that measurement is a, is, is a practice that you share uh, with, with, with everybody that's involved in, in, in the investment. Um, and, um, and yeah, and, and make sure that it's the best experience possible for all and, and, and for your impact. Don't know if we have time for questions or if there are questions in the chat that you want me to address. Um. Thanks, Davina. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat um, now. I think for some context for anybody that's that's here as well, before we jump over to Nabila, um, any entrepreneurs in the room, if you're looking on learning a lot more detailed version of what uh, Davina just gave us a great picture of. We do a lot of investment readiness workshops with different partners. So feel free to sign up for our newsletter in case you uh, are geographically around where we run a uh, investment readiness workshop. This is one of the workshops that we put on. Uh, and if you are an investor uh, looking to get involved with this program, we do dive deeper into this topic as well. So uh, if this has kind of piqued your interest, uh, definitely opportunities for both investors and entrepreneurs to get involved to learn more. Uh, Nabila, over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Um, and Davina, that presentation was fantastic. It's like a crash course in impact investing for beginners, just all of the concepts that you need to know at the outset. Um, just to put that into context, uh, I'd like to share just a bit more about how the Pollinator Fund thinks about measuring and evaluating impact in healthcare. As Toby touched on, impact is a core consideration for everything that we do. So for us, it means we take an impact first approach to our investment decisions, to our portfolio management, and even to our value add. So we're really working with the portfolio to ensure that their mission is front and center as they scale, and that we're advocates for making business decisions with their mission in mind. So within healthcare more specifically, we have three verticals that we focus on, which are inclusive healthcare, first mile health, and harm reduction. Uh, and I'm gonna share a bit more about how we identify those focus areas with an impact lens in mind. So first we centered on what kind of impact we wanted to facilitate in health. For us, it's improving quality of life through accessible healthcare. And then we got clear on who our target beneficiaries are which are individuals, especially those that aren't well served by mainstream healthcare system. And this seems really broad, but it's important for us to highlight that it's the people or the patients that are the focus and not the institutions. With that in mind, we then work backwards to identify some key themes that took into consideration what Davina highlighted around market gaps, our interests, and then value add to come up with our focus on the three pillars, so inclusive healthcare, first mile health, and harm reduction. Once we had aligned on the verticals, then we worked to identify high level metrics for the sector, such as the number of people impacted within the target population or the reduction in chronic conditions, 
um, or dollars saved in healthcare treatment. These metrics are aimed at addressing the broad healthcare outcomes, and we do definitely get more specific at the individual company level uh, because what each company does changes um, and what their individual KPIs are will be different as well. Um, we try to align these key impact indicators with the business's existing KPIs so that it's baked into the work the company's already doing and they're not having to measure something different um, and we're making sure the business and the impact is very aligned. So to give you a couple of examples from our portfolio, just to put this into a bit more perspective, um, I wanted to start with talking about Pocket Naloxone. Um, they've developed an over-the-counter, easy to use and affordable version of Naloxone to limit opioid overdoses and deaths. So measuring impact for them is as simple as tracking the number of units sold as the use of each kit plays a role in saving someone's life. Oh, on the other side of the spectrum um, is our portfolio company, Got Care. Uh, this is actually similar to the example that Davina provided. It's a platform that connects individuals with local care workers. Uh, and we track a, a wide variety of variables for them because as a marketplace, there's the personal support workers, but then there's also the patients being cared for themselves. Uh, so we're tracking the number and diversity of personal support workers. We want to make sure that their quality of work is good. Um, so we're tracking their wage opportunities and their tenure. And then we also want to make sure that the patients are well supported um, and that they're able to reach um, a wide variety of patients as well. So we're also tracking the number of patients matched with the personal support worker. So you can see that there's a lot more nuance on the side of the measurement and a spectrum to how we evaluate it. It's also worth noting that impact measurement is not a science. Uh, we have discussions around individual deals to align on what we should be measuring. Um, and we do take inspiration from sector specific standards. Uh, one great resource is Iris Plus, which has um, a database effectively uh, of measurements across a wide variety of sectors. Uh, we're flexible when we need to be, but that's definitely a great resource to lean on. The other factor to note is the influence of stage on impact measurement. So the earlier you go uh, at, in a startup's life or a company's life, the less data you have and the harder it is to measure impact. Um, so I would also caution, you know, depending on where you're investing, be, be realistic um, about what kind of information you get. Uh, when we're earlier on in the process, it's more about the theory of change and baselining the impact data so that moving forward, we have something um, to compare to. Uh, and then just wanted to leave you all with some resources um, if, to, to learn more on your own and to start to develop uh, your own positions as well. Uh, Davina already referenced a fantastic one, the Impact Management Platform. Um, and another one that we use quite extensively is the Global Impact Investing Network, or GIN. Um, they have great standards and resources, such as the Iris Plex database that I referenced earlier, and really best-in-class information so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and I mean, we've been benefiting from this wealth of resources. Uh, we're currently part of the Impact Frontiers cohort from the Impact Management Platform. I tried not to use acronyms because it ends up just being a lot of eyes, um, but I can see how expanding it out makes it wordy too. Um, but hopefully the, the logos and resources on the slide will help you get there. Uh, and then just finally, I wanted to note, you know, this is an evolving process for us. We're looking forward to sharing more in the future as we continue to develop. Um, our impact management practice, um, but would also love to hear from you on best practices and how we can continue to develop the impact ecosystem together. Back to you, Kristen. Thank you so much, Davina and Nabila. Um, here we go. So we've heard from uh, quite a few people already. Uh, so thank you so much again, Davina, Nabila, Graham, Toby, um, for, for all sharing with us today. The next portion of our event, we'll be heading into our breakout room discussion. So we got an excellent overview of uh, measuring and evaluating impact generally from Davina. And then we heard about it from one investor's perspective from Nabila about how the TELUS Pollinator Fund thinks about this. And so we'd like to now break off and hear more from the entrepreneur's perspective about how they go about tackling this. Uh, and we'd like to kind of focus in on three different domains here. So the first being digital health, 
uh, the second being mental health and the third being medical devices. So today we're joined by uh, some incredible guest speakers and entrepreneurs. The first uh, entrepreneur with digital health is uh, Althea from Kobol, who will be joined by Nabila for a little fireside chat in our first room. In our second room uh, will be our mental health room with uh, Nicola from Kokoro, uh, who will be joined by myself. And then our third room, we have medical devices conversation with Lawrence from Arbutus Medical, who will be joined by Toby. Uh, and really looking forward to jumping into these conversations. So how this is gonna work, if you uh, indicated when you registered for the event an interest in one of the particular rooms, you have been assigned to that breakout room. Anybody else who's with us today and hasn't uh, previously indicated interest in a particular room, you'll be added to a breakout room that will open momentarily. And keep in mind, someone from our team will be in the main Zoom room. So if you do wanna hop between rooms or you'd rather be in a different room, you're welcome to leave the breakout room and join back into the main stage. And uh, from there, Selena from our team will be able to uh, direct you to a different room. Uh, so we'll jump into our breakout rooms for a short period of time, uh, get to hear from our speakers uh, and have some audience questions. And then after that, we'll jump uh, back into the main room here. Thank you, Selena. We went through some uh, different approaches to thinking about what you should think about at the beginning stages of launching your business around impact. Uh, Nicola is a very data-driven founder, and so she has lots of different uh, metrics and areas of impact that she measures and prioritizes. Something really interesting that we ended up discussing further was around this kind of language of impact and how every different stakeholder within the industry has different assumptions or ways that they communicate and interpret impact or different measurements of impact and definitions. And so being really conscious when going into those conversations, not to be running on assumptions, but to be really clear about how different people perceive this uh, and what metrics will be most important to them. Uh, and then we ended off the conversation going a bit deeper into something that's mainly important within mental health and healthcare. And it's how different stakeholders perceive mental health companies. When we think about healthcare companies in general, typically you hear digital health company, medical device company, and you think, yes, that's a healthcare company. Sometimes you look at mental health companies and there's a little bit of a gray line between uh, wellness and mental health. And so what does it actually mean to be a mental health company versus a wellness company? Uh, and how do different stakeholders, whether it be investors, accelerators, customers, perceive your company uh, if it's truly a health company or if it's kind of a wellness company? And how do you best position yourself as an entrepreneur as well to some of these stakeholders? So really amazing learnings on that front. Uh, so thank you so much, Nicola. Uh, and uh, Nibula or Toby, would, would you like to share some, some uh, points of conversation that came up? Yeah, I'm happy to share and jump in. Um, yeah, I think similar, we had a really interesting conversation and, and a lot of uh, group um, questions and, and great comments as well. Um, what I found interesting uh, was, you know, there's multiple stakeholders that affect a startup and how, uh, surprising to me, impact isn't the main consideration for the end user of the product. It's a need that needs to be met, uh, more important on the investor side, but there's definitely room for investors to mature in their thinking and not necessarily pigeonhole a company into like, oh, you seem like you fall into this group, this group is hot now, let's let's go and invest and really take the time to get to know what the company's doing. And, um, you know, if, if it's a new space that's being created and if there's more opportunity and if they could be considering it in a, in a slightly different angle. So I thought that was really cool um, and, and good food for thought for us as well. Um, we also had discussions about you know, how, what to expect from a company at the early stage in terms of impact measurement to make sure that we're not burdening them too much um, and when the right time to start measuring impact is. Um, and then also some really rich discussion on, you know, how do you cater to different cultures um, when your product is so relevant to so many people and you want to make sure that you're covering them um, and or reaching them in, in an appropriate way. Awesome. Thanks, Nabila. And thanks, Kristen. Um, and lastly, thanks, Lawrence, for hosting our session. Um, we had some fantastic discussion around uh, a number of factors, some overlap with you, Nabila, as well. Maybe I'll start there on the cultural implications uh, of the impact that you're 
creating and the ability to find opportunities in this multi-market approach for impact, recognizing that there may be uh, resource constraint entities and recipients ultimately that that are present in the North American context, for example, but also in emerging markets and developing countries. Abuse Medical, for example, operating across 39 countries across the world, um, in Uganda, for example, as well as North America, and catering to healthcare systems and health systems overall. And the, the view there that selling a medical device in that space to those different markets can be very different, but the need is ultimately quite similar. And finding opportunities to make affordable medical devices um, available to those stakeholders is equally as important and takes a nuanced approach, but has this opportunity to, to create a, a massive impact on, on both sides. We also spoke about impact measurement uh, in the context of primary as well as secondary, and that it is ultimately an ever evolving art and, and science, um, recognizing that there are opportunities for impact to start with in terms of measurement, but then that there are also secondary and ter tertiary knock-on effects that can be measured, captured, uh, and considered when um, considering the, the impact that uh, a, a medical device solution will ultimately have. Um, and yeah, I think the, the final point and which drives the, the thesis of uh, our viewers to a large extent also is uh, this concept of frugal innovation, um, which uh, is, I think, such a fantastic term about the idea that you can leverage existing technology and build something new out of it and, and create an impact through that. And um, yeah, I, I think that brings me to, um, again, thanking everyone for participating today. Amazing and great kind of reflections and, and overviews of the discussions today. Um, definitely, you know, wish you could be in multiple places at once in this scenario to hear what everybody was talking about. Um, so Selena has shared a feedback form in our chat here. Would love to get any thoughts uh, from anybody here today on how you enjoyed the event. If you have any feedback that you'd like to share for future events as well. Um, and just wanted to say one last thank you to uh, everybody that came out today, as well as our guest speakers and entrepreneurs that came out. And of course, to everybody from both the TELUS pollinator teams and the spring teams who are both here on this stage today as well that you've heard from and those behind the scenes kind of helping to get everything uh, done for this event. Uh, so one final call to action here as well. Uh, definitely check out the blog post with our top 20 companies if you're interested in here, seeing more uh, healthcare companies. And uh, if you are an aspiring angel investor or an active angel investor who has become interested around some of these topics of discussion and the program, feel free to check out more about our program or reach out to me directly if you have any questions. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending uh, and hope to see you. Thank you. That's great. Thanks for doing it. <laughs>